Hey, what's up everyone? So in the last episode, we were able to create some API endpoints that helps us to work with our charts. So we can be able to create a chart, list our chart, and also find a, a specific chart, okay? Now, in this episode, I want us to work on some more API endpoints, just two of them, to work with our messages. One of the API endpoint will help us to get messages for a certain chart, just like this. And then on the front end, we'll be able to see who sent the message, who didn't send the message, and we will style them appropriately. And then we will also create another API endpoint, which will help us to uh, submit a message. So this will be a post request to submit a message and create that message in the database. So let's just uh, dive right in and uh, create our messages APIs. Uh, so inside the server, we'll start by creating our uh, messages model. So right here, I'll add a new file and uh, let's call it message model uh, dot js. Uh, right here, we need to bring in a uh, mongoose. So I'll say const mongoose will be equal to require mongoose. Let's create our schema. So right here, I'll say const uh, message schema. Uh, will be equal to new mongoose.schema. So each message will be having a chat ID. So chat ID. And this will be a string. And then we will be having a sender ID. ID of the person who is sending the message. And this will be a string. And then uh, we will be having the message itself. We can say text. And this will also be a string. And uh, that will be the shape of our message. Using this chart ID, we'll be able to get all the messages uh, for a certain chart. And then using this sender ID, we'll know who sent the message and who uh, received the message. So right here, let's also add the timestamps. Uh, now that we have the schema here, let's create our model. So we'll say const our uh, message. I can say message model uh, will be equal to mongoose uh, dot model and we invoke these. Uh, we will call our collection uh, messages. So right here, you just uh, pass it as a singular word. And now right here, we pass our message schema. Now we have the model. Uh, let's make sure that we are exporting it. So module.exports of our message model. Okay, good. Now let's jump into our controllers. And we will create the uh, message controller. So I'll add a new file. And I'll say message controller dot js. Let's bring in our model. So this will be coming from uh, we require our models, then a message model. Now down here, let's create uh, the first controller. Uh, we will be having two. Uh, one will be for creating a message. And then the other one will be for uh, getting the messages. So get messages and create message. So let's start with create message. We will create an arrow function, const uh, create message. And this will be equal to an arrow function. It will be async. And let's work on our messages right here. 
So the first thing that we will do uh, is to get the chart ID, the sender ID, and the text from our request body. So right here, we should be having request and response. Let's extract const chart ID, sender ID, and text. And all these will come from our request dot body. Now, right here, we can create a new document using our model. So const message. So this is a message document will be equal to new uh, message model. Then we pass our, our body or our values right here. And that will be chat ID, send ID and text. So I'll copy that and paste here. And now we need to save uh, this message in the database. So right here, this will be an async call and it's good to wrap it with a try and catch block. So let's try here and also catch. And now right here, we can save our message here uh, to the DB. So I'll say message dot save. Uh, we can await it and also store it in a response. So I can say const response will be equal to await message.save. We send now these uh, to the client. So we say res dot status. Now this will be 200 meaning okay dot JSON. And we send our response. RS Bonds. So let me save to auto format. And this is what we have, okay? Uh, pretty easy, pretty uh, straightforward. Now uh, we need to export this create message down here. So I'll say module.exports. And we set this to be our create message. Let's create this get uh, messages uh, controller. This is an easy one. So we'll be having a function. We will get the ID of a chart uh, from the params. So here we will be getting all the messages uh, for a certain chart, okay? So we need the chart ID. So let's bring in chart ID here. And these will come from request.params like that okay and then now we can use this chat id um, to find our messages okay so right here uh, i will try and catch so try now let's come here and say const messages now these will be equal to we await our message model dot find and we perform, we add a filter here. So we will add our chart ID. So that will get all the messages for a certain chart, okay? And then we send these uh, to the client. Let me just copy this one, paste it here, and we change these two messages. So, and that's it. That is how we can create a message and also get all the messages for a certain uh, chart. But we need to add these to our route. So, right here, let's complete. We export get messages. Then we go to our routes and we'll add a message route. So, I'll add a new file and I'll say uh, message uh, route.js. Okay, um, now let me copy whatever is in our chart route. I will highlight everything, copy, and I'll paste in our message route. Um, we will not be using these controllers. We will need express and we'll create our router. And we'll need these to uh, export the router. 
Now right here, let us remove this. Now uh, router.post, uh, here we will be creating a message. So instead of create chat, let us call uh, create message. And we make sure to auto import that right here. And then we need another one. Now this will be a get request to get the messages. And we should pass uh, an ID at our param, which is chat ID. And right here, we call our get uh, messages controller. So uh, that is it for this uh, page. Now we need to uh, bring in our message route in our root index.js here. So let's import that. Now this will be message right here. A message route. We import that from our message route. Now right here, let us add it as a middle layer here. So stroke API, stroke messages. And then now right here, we will have our message route. I save. Now we can go ahead and test if they are working. Okay, now from Postman, the first thing we need to perform a post request uh, to our stroke API and then our stroke uh, messages. Okay, then we will have the body. We will need to include a sender ID. So right here, I can take this as the sender. So I'll say sender. And then uh, the second one will be a text right here. So let's create the text. And we can say, hello. We also need a chat ID. Uh, so I can get one of the charts. Um, here we are finding charts. Let's send. And uh, we can get this ID for the chart. You can get also from the database, okay, the ID. So I'm just using this as an easy way. So right here, we also need to add the chart ID. Just like that. So these uh, matches our a messages model. So in our models, message model, we had chat ID, sender ID, and text. Cool. Now if I submit this request, we should get back uh, the message with its own ID. So let's send and see if it's working. So chat ID, sender ID, text. Okay, now we need to test get messages where we are getting all the messages for a certain chart. So we need this chat ID again. I'll copy it from here. Then right here now we will be performing a get request, but we will be doing these two stroke messages. And then, uh, okay, stroke messages here. And then uh, we need to include the ID of the chat right here. So when we do this, we should get all the messages in a, an array form of this particular chat. And right now, we only have one message, this one. We should get it uh, right here. So let's send. And uh, now this is in an array, and we get that message right here. So this is uh, working pretty nice. Now, in the next episode, now we will move into our front end, and we will consume our chat uh, API and also our messages APIs. And uh, after that, we'll now be able to use Socket.io for real-time implementation and so on. So I'll see you in the next one.